guys, welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Jenny, and today we are going to be talking about Butterick 6735. This is a Katherine Tilton for Butterick pattern. And this is a little bit new for us. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you will have noticed that I don't usually do um, these, like the big four patterns uh, for so long. So this is the first one, I think. I think this is the first one. Um, this is also a t-shirt, which is something I haven't done since, I don't think, I think I did an LB Textiles t-shirt and sweatshirt, but I don't think I did it as a sew along. That was like way back last summer. The last time I did a t-shirt sew along, I think was the very first, my very first video maybe? Anyways, so sort of new stuff all around. Um, what do I wanna say about this? Okay, so it's a big four pattern. Obviously the sizing is big four sizing. This one, just so you know, According to Big Four sizing, or uh, the Butterick size chart, the bust on a large is supposed to be a 38 to 40. On a medium, it's supposed to be a 34 to a 36. I always buy a medium. My bust is 39, so it, it definitely falls into the large category. This I made a medium. I always make the medium. Um... This does not have finished measurements on it, which is way annoying, but, uh, so I just made a straight medium. And it fits, however, there are a couple of things that are a little uh, off in terms of sizing, so, but we'll go over those a little bit later. For now, let's just say, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's a generous size, so <clears throat> I, I definitely fall into the large category for their sizing. And this is a medium, and it's still, I have plenty of room in this. So I, I think you're fine going with whatever size you normally sew in the big four. And if you aren't familiar with them, you know, you're for this particular pattern anyway, you're probably going to, if you're between sizes, definitely go with the smaller. Okay. The fabrics suggested are uh, moderate stretch knits. With 35% cross grain stretch, so jerseys, interlock, cotton knits, ran knits, unsuitable for obvious diagonals. Um, I sewed mine in a two versions, two cotton knits. They're co both cotton spandex and roughly the same uh, quantity as each in, in both patterns. Are both fabrics. This um, brighter print side is a, a pattern that I actually got from MarcyTilton.com, and I think I got that last spring. Um, the black and white on this side, very similar fabric. I got this from my local fabric store and um, that was just a couple of weeks ago. Okay, so this pattern might seem a little, at first it seems like just a t-shirt. However, it has 14, no, I think each, either, either version has nine pieces. Um, so, you have a, a right front yoke and sleeve, a right yoke and sleeve, because it's front yoke, back yoke, and sleeve all in one piece. And a, the same thing on the left. They're obviously asymmetric. They're not equal. So, one for the left, one for the right. Then you have, for the front panel, you have a right and a left. And for the back, you have a right, middle, left. And then you have a neckband. Now, this isn't like a complicated sew. It's a lot of pieces, so it might be a little bit intimidating, but it's it's really pretty straightforward. There are a couple of tricky little bits, um, and I'll get to those right now in our tutorial. I'll show you how I put this together, and then we'll come back and do a little more talking. So for the pieces we have, we have nine pieces. Piece number one looks like this, and this is um, a yoke and a sleeve. This is the other piece. This is also a yoke and a sleeve. This is number two. Number three, and this is the only piece you need to cut two of. 
um, at the same time. The other pieces you're going to cut one at a time. This is the undersleeve. And like I said, I've cut this one right sides together and two at a time. Number four is the right front. Number five is the left front. Number six is the center back. And you'll notice there are pleats here. Be sure you make all, be sure you mark all of your pleats and your notches on all of these and your dots. That's six. Number seven is the right back. Number eight is the left back. And then the last piece is number 14, and that's your neck binding, and that's cut on the fold. Okay, so this is piece number one, and you'll see there's a big dart right here. This is at the neckline. So we're going to get rid of that. We are going to fold that dart together. our dart right there we're just going to sew that from the edge to the end of the dart make sure you back tack and then you're going to do the same thing on piece number two you'll see there's a dart on this one it's on this side and you're going to do the exact same thing you're going to fold it right sides together fold your dart in pin it and then sew that there we have our darts and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to trim this off like that on both of these And then we're going to open them out and press that dart flat on both. Now you'll see, once we've pressed this flat, you're going to see that this dart at the very point, is you're not going to be able to cut that open. So just press that to one side and press this rest of it open. Now we're going to take these and put them right sides together. We're matching up the short end of our neck here. So ignore your sleeve. This is the back. This is the front and the short end on this one. You'll see that there's a long end. Those are going to go together and a short end. These two go together. Now, th this piece is going to be a little bit longer. Just match up your notches. Just like that. And you'll see this one is going to stick out a little bit just like that. We're going to stitch this together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then you're going to trim that seam, press it to one side, and top stitch it. Okay, once we have that pressed open, that's the back side. And I used, um, I searched mine off and then I used a cover stitch to uh, top stitch mine. It's going to be hard to see because part of mine is black here, but that's okay. Then this is the lower front edge. You're going to stay stitch this whole thing all the way around here. Then... We're going to fold these two long ends. You can see this is where the neck hole is right here. This is the front. This is the center back. We're going to flip this over like this. We're going to match up our notches, which are right here. And then we're going to do the same thing to the back. We're going to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. We're going to trim it, press it, and then top stitch that down too. So that's our whole yoke put together. The next thing we're going to do is grab piece number three, which looks like this. There should be two of them. Now we're going to turn this over. So this is the back of our sleeve. And this is the right side. And we want this to fit in here like this. So the way I do this is I'm going to lay this piece so the curved part is up. I'm going to put this on top of it. This is the back side of our sleeve. We're going to match up this end. And 
And then we're gonna look for our notches. Our next notch is right here. And there's one right here. We're gonna match those up. And then we're gonna match the end of our sleeve over here. And then we're just gonna go through and pin it so it's laying nice and even all the way around. Now the tricky part is this curve right here. So we're putting a rounded edge into a, a convex curve into a concave curve or the other way around, not sure how that works. We're just gonna sort of match those up. You can see I'm stretching the, um, the, the straighter edge to meet the curved edge, just like that. And same thing over here. And it's not going to lay flat yet. It's going to look like that. And you're going to stretch it as you sew to make those edges meet. Now you're going to sew that whole thing down with your 5 8 inch seam allowance. You're going to trim it down and then you're going to press it. And you're going to press it up. So you're going to press it towards the yoke. And then again, you're going to top stitch it. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other sleeve. So it looks like that on one side and that on the other. So just when you go to sew, make sure you're straightening this out so you're not getting any wrinkles in there. So now um, the back of our sleeve should look something like that. And the front will look like that. This is the other side, that's the back, and that's the front. Now we're just gonna put that aside for a few minutes. We're gonna take our next piece which is number four and piece number five. And we're gonna sew these together. <clears throat> so this is the right front and this is the left front. And we're gonna put these together like this, right sides together, and sew straight down this seam with our 5 8 inch seam allowance. There is right here, right around here somewhere, there's a notch to match up. And then you're gonna notice down here at the bottom, or close to the bottom, there's an angle. So when you get here, you're gonna see, you can see mine's marked in chalk right here. There's a, um, a, uh, a dot marking right here. So just be sure when you sew this, you're gonna sew 5 eighths of an inch, and then you at this corner, this dot, you're gonna pivot and come off at an angle. And sew that also at 5 eighths of an inch. Then you're going to trim that seam down and press it to one side and then you're going to do your top stitching again. And this is what that looks like. Now when you do this center front, you're going to notice that there's a little poof right here where that pivot was. That's so when we put our hem in, it'll be able to lay flat like that. So don't worry about that. It should do that. Now we're going to pin the top of this to the right side of our front yoke. Now. Let's just look, take a look at this yoke really quickly. The front yoke is the shorter one, the one that we did the um, stay stitching on. So what we're gonna wanna do is match up these two seams. So let's put this one right sides together like this. Now we don't wanna just match up our seams, we wanna make sure that our top stitching is matching too so that it looks like one continuous line on the right side. So we're gonna pin that together there. And then we have a notch over here. We're gonna pin that. We're gonna pin this end together. And again, you're gonna see that one is gonna stick out a little more, that's fine. The yoke will stick out a little more, just like that. 
Now, again, we have two curves, two opposite curves we need to, meet, need to match up here. So if you need to put some clips in this yoke edge, go ahead and do that. Check your back side and make sure you're not going to have any big bumps or anything. You are going to need to stretch this a bit as you sew to get that to lay flat. Now on this side, we have another notch here and here. So let's match those up. And again, the yoke piece is going to stick out a little further than the bodice piece, and that is fine. They're going to match up at your 5 8 inch seam allowance, which is right about there. Okay, just make sure that's laying flat there. And on this one, this is a pretty steep curve, so I am going to put a snippet in here. Put a couple. So I can get that to lay a little flatter. Now we're going to sew this down and we're going to press, we're going to trim that seam allowance and we're going to press it towards the yoke and then we're going to top stitch again. Just remember that this is a pretty curvy seam, so go slowly and stretch your fabric where you need to to make sure that you're laying flat right where you're stitching. Don't worry about this stuff back here. It doesn't need to lay flat over here, just along your stitching line. Now this is our center back panel and I don't think you're really going to be able to see these pleats back here, but I'm going to mark them with a pin. So that's one leg. That's one. And that is the other side. Okay, so now we're going to bring these two pleats, these two pieces together like this. So the right sides of your fabric are together. I'm just gonna match up my pins and pin right through that line. I can check on this side, that looks good. That looks good. And now we're gonna do this side. Match up your lines and pin them together. And then just double check to make sure you're in the right spot. And we are. And then I'll put one more in here. And check to make sure that is right. And it is. Okay, so now we'll open this up. We have our two pleats right here. And we want them to meet in the center. So just like that. And the directions say to base it all the way down. Um, I don't think, I'm not going to do that. Um, I, I don't think we really need to. I think from the outside, It'll look like a box pleat coming out. I'm going to baste up one side, across the top, and then back down this side. And um, I'm just going to base it right along that edge there. Our next step is to sew the right side back to the center back. So that's piece number seven that we want. And we're just going to get rid of this. And we do have a notch about midway down right here that we can match up to our notch over here. So we're just gonna place these right sides together. And I'm gonna pin that notch first. And then I just wanna show you guys up here, you're gonna see again, you have like a curve and a corner. So you're gonna have to pin this together and then pull that down so that that edge meets 
like that. Now, if you're having trouble getting that to lay flat in your machine, you can um, put a little snip in the under piece here. Now, just make sure the rest of this is laying even all the way down. And then at the bottom here, this is at the hem, we have another really tricky point where you have an inward curve and an outward curve. So you can have those, make sure those meet up. You'll have a dot right here. I don't know if you can see this on mine, but my dot is there and my dot on this piece is right here. So I'm gonna match those two dots up just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin that in. Now, when I match those dots, you'll see that that edge comes down further than the corner. So this one, and I think in order to do this one, it's a pretty big corner. I'm gonna snip this right in here in this under piece, making sure I don't snip more than my seam, my, uh, seam allowance. And then I'm just gonna pull this back like that. And line that up and again this is another one of those funky corners that we have um, to make sure our hem fits back in there when we go to hem this okay so it's gonna look really weird when you go to sew this in fact you might want to sew it with um, the center back piece up front so that you on top so that you can see what you're doing and you'll see you're going to sew right along here and miss that notch that we just cut and then sew back down this way. And in fact, I think I'm going to turn mine over and uh, put my pins in the other side. That's better. This way I can start sewing down here and sew up like this and then down this way and I can make sure that none of this is getting caught in my sewing machine if I have this side up. Okay, so that is the back right side. Now, the next thing we want to do is attach piece eight, which is the back left side. And on this one, let's get rid of this. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to put this on the like right sides together, and then I'm going to turn it upside down so that my center back piece is on top. Again, so when we go around these funky corners, we'll have the fabric that's going to be most trouble on top and we can see what's going on. So I'm going to match my notches here, the center. And I can see I have a dot here. And the dot on the back is right there. Match those up. And just double check. Yeah, that's good. And again, I'm going to snip into the seam allowance of the center back piece. So it's just the one piece, just like that. And then I can fold this down this way to the corner. Let's do this. Put that pin that way. Okay, and then up here we should have another dot, which on this one is right here. And it matches up with this guy right here. All right, now I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this guy in, making sure all my edges meet. Now, again, if I have this piece on top, I can make sure when I'm sewing that I'm not getting any of this extra stuck in my sewing machine and I can make sure that I'm catching all of that space right there inside the seam allowance and not catching any of this extra down here. All right, so that is our back right side and our back left side. We're gonna sew both of those together and then we are going to press them and top stitch them. That is our lower back assembled. Now we're gonna take our yoke and we are going to take the back yoke, this part right here, and we're gonna put it right sides together, so face down 
on our center back on our lower back piece and we are going to match up this center seam with the split between your pleats so that's the center back and that seam is the center back of your yoke so that's where we're going to start is just by pinning that together and then I'm just going to pin that pleat down first so it doesn't move around on me on this side over here you'll see some notches double notches here Oops, oops, just a single notch right there. And if you match that up, you'll see that this uh, top stitching line here and the top stitching line on your yoke should pretty much meet up at 5 eighths of an inch. So they're not going to match up at the edge. They're going to be at odds with each other at the ends. But right here where, they, where you're going to sew, you can feel that they cross over each other. You can see that right there. So you should then be good. we have some more notches over here. I have double notches here, so let's match those up. And now we're going to do the other side. So again, there's one notch here. And then we have our two rows of top stitching, one on the top piece, one on the bottom piece. And they should meet up right at about 5 eighths of an inch, so right about here. And then again, on the side panel, we have a double notch right here. Okay, like with all of our other seams, we are going to sew that the whole way across with a 5 eighths inch seam allowance. We're going to press it towards the yoke, and then we're going to top stitch it, uh, trim our seams and top stitch it. So that's our back done. But I don't know if you guys can see here, these seams, even if you sew them where they're supposed to, I mean, I couldn't get mine to meet up and they're off by about a half an inch on both sides. So anyways, just um, FYI, it might just be me. Um, okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is just turn this right side out. Sorry, wrong side out. We're gonna turn it right sides together and we are going to sew our side seams. We're just gonna pin all the way from the hem and you really do want this, these underarm seams to match and then we're gonna sew all the way to the end and we're gonna do that on both sides. So hem to the end of the sleeve on both sides. Okay, next up, I don't know, can you guys see that whole thing? I think it looks pretty good. Just so you know, I went ahead and took my basing out of that um, pleat in the back it does not actually tell you any way in the directions to do that, but I can't imagine why you would leave that in there. So the next thing we have to do is just put our binding on, and it should be pretty straightforward. You're going to match up your center back. Um, the way they have you do this is match up your center back, your center front, your notches. You are obviously going to have to stretch your neck to fit your... Um, yeah, your neck band to fit your neck line. On this one, you have a few um, notches. You also have the um, dots on your neck band are actually match up with your shoulder seams. So once you get that pinned in, you're just going to go ahead and sew that. You're going to trim it down, press the seam allowance towards the neck binding, and then you're going to fold it to the inside and they recommend that you do a stitch in the ditch, like right along here around the neck band. I'm actually just going to cover stitch mine because I've done that on the whole thing. But just so you know, if you're going to stitch in the ditch, use a stretch stitch of some sort because you obviously want that stretch. Or you can stretch this as you stitch it. The only thing we have left to do is our hems. And the sleeve hems are going to be pretty straightforward. Just hem them the way you would a regular t-shirt. The thing we want to talk about on the hem of the top is, um, where is it? In one of these sections we have a little notch that needs to get sewn up. Oh, here, it's in the, um, 
it's in the back panel and it's off it's at the point of the back panel you're gonna fold that right sides together and when you were cutting this out you should have made some sort of a mark there you'll see that little line and you're just gonna match that up and stitch that down right there and then you can go ahead and trim that off and press it that's going to give you another funky little corner so when you fold this up all of these funky little corners really should help you to make that hem lay really nicely in there so just go ahead and press that up you can finish this edge here if you want to or you don't have to i'm going to cover stitch mine so i'm not going to do that but i am going to fold all those things up and i think this is an inch yeah, it looks like this hemline is actually an inch and a half. So, it's a pretty deep hem. Anyway, you're just going to go ahead and finish that edge any way you want to, or don't finish it if you want to, and press that up all the way around. And like I said, when you get to these funky corners, you'll see that they really just make it easier for this to fold right up on itself. And all of it will fit in there without, you know, having to stretch everything out of shape. Okay, so... The trickiest bits really are uh, sewing the curves, like the curve around, particularly around the front yoke, um, and then that the underarm piece, which you can't see here, this piece right here. Um, okay, aside from that though, not particularly difficult. I will say this, like I said, this is a cotton spandex. I, I actually think, I'm gonna show you pictures of this up here. I think I would like this better in more of a rayon or modal, 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 I don't know how you say that, modal, <laughs> one of those drapier jerseys. Um, just because it has a pleat in the back and it's, um, I, I don't know if I would like sewing it in um, one of those lighter jerseys, but I think I would like the drape a bit better. Um, a couple of things I don't like, and I pointed this out in, in the actual tutorial. I'll show a close-up picture of it here. There's a, like, the seam from the yoke doesn't match up with the seam from the bodice in the back. I feel like it should. Um, I could have made a mistake. I can't figure that out. So if somebody else knows how to get that to match up, let me know. Um, the other thing I don't really like about this is there seems to be a little excess fabric at the back of the underarm and I'll try to get a picture of that up here for you too. I don't know. It's not a big deal. It's just a t-shirt, but um yeah, I and I'm not really sure how to how to alleviate that, honestly. So, there's that. Um aside from that, I actually really like the shape of this shirt. I think it's very interesting. I like the it went together really well and really easily. I will say, like, those little points, like, at the at the bottom where the you, you do the mitering for the hem all the way around, that is what could be a little bit tricky. Um, although, once you, you do it a couple of times, like, it's it's really not. Um, it's a little, it's fiddly. It's not difficult. It's just fiddly, you know, trying to get the pieces to lay flat. The other thing is, once again, I went with my <laughs> cover stitch machine. Um, I don't know if you can see here, my cover stitch is not great around the neck. In fact, it looks like part of it is coming off here, so I don't know if I nicked it or something. Sorry, I have like lint on my face or something today. Okay, I think that's better. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm still adjusting to this cover stitch machine. And what I did was on, on this one, I searched all my seams and then I cover stitched them with them with that heavy cover stitching, which should be the wrong side. I did it on the outside because I wanted that to be a detail. Um, but with this fabric um, and the serging, I feel like it was just too thick. So my cover stitch machine was having trouble um, and it was getting caught on the serging threads or something. So. Uh, next time I think I would just use the straight stitch machine, the straight stitch machine, and then cover stitch the seams after that. I wouldn't serge them first. You don't really need to if you're using a cover stitch machine, and that's a little bit redundant. So, um, 
Okay, I think that is it. I will definitely make this again. Um, and in fact, I have another, I think it's another Catherine Tilton um, t-shirt that's got like the different panels on it. It's a new one though. I think it just it was just released for, for spring. So I just got that one and I'll probably try to make that one sometime soon too. Which brings me to my question. So as I said, this is the first time I've ever done a big four on my um, channel. And I'm curious to know um, what you guys think about that. If you'd like to see some more of uh, maybe Catherine and Marcy Tilton or if there's something else you'd like to see. Or do you prefer that I just stick with my traditional indie patterns? Um, yeah, let me know below in the comments. And also, I do finally have the blog up. Again, excuse the blog. I'm not a big blogger, but I did put some photos up, uh, both finished photos and processed photos of this shirt that you can refer to if you need to while you're sewing this. And next week we are going to be sewing the two bet the two pegs by Pearl Red Moon. I'll put a picture of that up here. I will talk to you guys all on Friday for another episode of Friday Sews. Until then, happy sewing.